And it says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, in reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just glorify you, we love you, and we thank you, because truly this is the day that you have made. We thank you that we can enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless this service. We pray that your anointing will fall. We pray that everyone that's here, Father God, that they will be blessed by a word that's being spoken. We just love you, we glorify, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. I just want to take this time to give honor to God, to the angel of this house, um, Bishop uh, and Sister Kelby, for giving me the opportunity to speak, as well as Brother McLeod. And I thank you, everyone, for your patience and waiting. Um, the the topic when um, Pastor McLeod told me about, you know, asking me to speak, I was like, well, I can prepare something, but I need, um, you know, is there a topic? And what he told me was, stay the course. Stay the course. And it's interesting how the young ladies, the two songs, I don't know if they knew what the, to the, the to topic was, but that, that both songs basically hinged upon what I'm going to speak. So if you didn't know about it, the Holy Spirit has used you. So, um, but it's stay the course. And the addendum to that that I have is failure is not an option. Stay the course because failure is not an option. So we have read Philippians 3, 13 through 14. It's interesting with technology these days when you type anything in, you know, just about anything you can find. Yeah. So when I typed in stay the course, I actually typed in stay the course, and this is what it says in Wikipedia. It's a phrase used in the context of war or battle, meaning to pursue a goal regardless of any obstacles or criticism. Again, it's a phrase used in the context of war or battle, meaning to pursue a goal regardless of any obstacles or criticism. And when um, former President um, Bush was in office, the one that just left office, um, with the Iraqi war, that's one of the things in his speech he would always say, stay the course, we have to stay the course. And um, it is still being used, it's not used as much as it is, um, as it is when he was in office. But it is very imperative, it's very important. Um, as I was thinking about that this morning, um, for those of you who remember Bishop Carlton Pearson, um, with um, higher dimensions, one of the things he used to say, um, he said the mothers in the church would always say to him, you yet hold it on, and he would say yes, and he, they would say to him, keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on. So that's just going along the same line. Um, a war, it, it's a context used in a war battle, meaning to pursue a goal regardless of any obstacles or criticism. You see on this life, um, or in this life, we're on a journey. Yes. And everyone on this journey doesn't start out the same. Amen. However, each person's journey begins at conception. Amen. And let's look at Psalm 139, 13 through 16. And it's very important that we know who we are. Because of the fact that, um, yes, we're Christians, but um, a lot of times we don't really remember or really realize who we are and the time and the depth or, or what the Lord has placed in us. Um, 13 through 16 says, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. And... Um, Basically, the meaning for that verse is saying, it, it says that the, he was fashioned or grown together in his mother's womb. Verse 14 says, I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul worketh right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yea, being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in countenance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. And here what the, the writer is saying is 
that when he talks about his friends, he's talking about his bones, he's talking about everything yes. that the Lord took the time to make. Everything was fashioned. Yes. Okay, when it talks about um, the 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 curio curiously wrought, he's talking about the it's almost like a diversity of colors. Everything was embroidered, fabricated, yes. made yes. curious, put together. It's um it's talking about the weaving and growth of the human body from conception to full development of a child. And then when he talks about the um, my substance was not um was yet being on perfect, but it was not hid from he here he's talking about the embryo being imperfect, it was so imperfect, but yet it was wrapped up. Um, the stage of growth from fertilization onto organism being developed so that it can live independently. So basically what the psalmist is saying is that when the Lord created me at the time of conception, when he, it wasn't, we're just not a blob. We're just not, you know, a, just a little limp. But we, we were curiously made. We were formed. We were fashioned. The Lord took the time to make us. And when we have that foundation, then we know that it doesn't matter who we are or where we're from, what families we were born in, guess what? We are perfectly made in the image of God. Amen? So, um... As mentioned, we're on life's journey, and as we grow and mature, this journey takes us through ver various courses. Some have taken us through mountains, through valleys, hills, ravines, it goes on and on, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. And while this may be interpreted as metaphorical, in some people's life and others, it's real. You have the tsunami that happened about four years ago. You have Hurricane Rita, you had yes. Katrina, you had tornadoes, Kansas, Missouri, well known for tornadoes, Kansas, well known for tornadoes. And there are those who have literally, as mentioned, literally experienced some of these acts of God and unfortunately have gone off course. Yes. These incidences, situations in life, whether sickness, disease, whatever, however they came in the form of these disasters have really basically derailed some people from their focus, from the course that the Lord has set for them. And um, years ago, because I grew up in the church, I, I cut my teeth on the benches. So when I see the little kids, you know, it just brings back memory. But years ago, one of the songs that they would sing is, Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. So as Christians, we know that we have a savior. He's our deliverer, comforter, healer, keeper, provider, guide, and we call him Jesus. And we can call him anytime, and he will meet us at the point of our need. Doesn't matter what the situation is, doesn't matter what we're going through, he will meet us at that point, amen? Psalm 121 and 1 says, I will lift up my eyes into the hills, for whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And in Isaiah 65 and 24 says, before we call, before they call, I will answer, and I will hear while they're yet speaking. So we have a God that he, as the scripture says, he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. We don't have to worry about what's going on. Yes, we do worry because it's human nature, but we know what? We have a God who cares for us, and he sees us, and he knows that we are his children, and he will do everything in his power to take care of us. The Bible is full of examples of men and women that were faced with obstacles and overcame them. Hebrews 11 gives you a list of, of the different men and women and how they've overcame these obstacles. The list includes Joseph who was sold into slavery by his brothers. David was ridiculed by his brothers when he was sent um, by his father to bring them food and um, some even said that he was rejected by his family because when Samuel went to anoint the king, okay, all his brothers were present except for David. Um, then you have Daniel, he was, he was thrown in the den of lions. You had the Hebrew teens that were thrown in, for, in the furnace because they refused to worship a heathen god. And then we have Paul. 
He was in prison because of his faith oh, in Christ. Amen. And of course,